Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all of you to God's house this morning. So thankful to God you're all here safe and sound. I don't know about you, but it was a little tenuous driving here from Fort Atkinson this morning. Just had to leave a little earlier to ride on the slippery roads. <clears throat> so glad to see all of you. And we look forward to our worship service here with the theme, No Jesus, No Peace. No Jesus, no peace. So we begin then with There is a Mom of Gilead, hymn 564. 564. serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. <laughs>
Almighty God, you gave your one and only Son to be the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and believed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning is recorded for us in 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Here's the familiar account where God speaks and Samuel listens. A wonderful practice for all of us and all of God's people. When God speaks, listen, and he has wonderful words of peace for us. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Prophetic vision was not common. Now, it happened that Eli's eyes had begun to grow dim so that he could not see. Once when Eli was lying down in his place and God's lamp had not yet gone out, Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's ark was. The Lord called Samuel and Samuel said, I am here. He ran to Eli and said, I am here since you called me. Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. Then the Lord called once more, Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, I am here since you called me. <laughs> he answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel had not yet experienced the Lord's presence. That is, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel for the third time. So he got up and went to Eli and said, I am here since you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the young man. So Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and once again lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there and called as he had the other times. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. We invite the congregation to turn to page 105 in the front part of our hymnal where we find Psalm 103. And here the psalmist shares with us a number of the great things our God does for us. Those blessings, those great blessings, are what give us peace. Page 105.
Thessalonica, chapter 2, beginning with verse 13. And here Paul reminds his hearers and his readers that God has chosen us from the beginning. What amazing grace. And of course, the encouragement to stand firm means that we're firm in the peace that God gives. But we are always obligated to thank God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning for salvation by the sanctifying work of the Spirit and faith in the truth. For this reason, he also called you through our gospel so that you would obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold on to the teachings that were passed along to you, either by word of mouth or by a letter from us. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and in his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and establish you in every good work and word. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Hallelujah. your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated. Our next hymn is found in the supplement, hymn 735, Speak, O Lord. If anyone might not have a supplement, raise your hand. And one of our councilmen will bring you a copy. Mm -hmm.
Christ says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. As we noted, God's word in which we wish to ponder together this, this special day is recorded some, from some selected verses there in John chapter 14. Let's read together this, the 14th verse, or the 27th verse, rather. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, our one and only Savior, my dear friends. A portable quote here. Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. Why is that the case? God's word has the answer. Also in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22, God says there, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. And all of you know that the wicked is anyone who is without Jesus. Anyone without Jesus is still clothed in all his sins, and in God's holy eyes is a wicked, no matter how good a person that individual may appear to be in our eyes. So that being the case, it reminds you and me, dear friends, of God's amazing grace, as we already heard in 2 Thessalonians, from the beginning, God chose you and me. Talk about grace. So from the beginning, God's worked out the details in our lives so that we know the way, the truth, and the life. We know Jesus as our Savior. So in Him, we can say we can have peace even amidst troubles. Following Jesus' encouragement in our text, trust in God and treasure Jesus. Why, we might add to why we would have no peace without Jesus. The Bible picks a pictures a very poor picture of where you and I would be if we didn't have Jesus and the grace of God. Because Paul wrote to the Ephesians before they came to know the Savior, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. How much can that dead animal do? They're alongside the road. Needless to say, nothing. So spiritually speaking, you and I, God's, God, all the people in the world can do nothing when it comes to their spiritual well-being. In addition to that, we have Paul's words in Romans 8, verse 7. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. So people may hear what God wants, to love one another and love Him with all our hearts, but by nature, people want the exact opposite. God says love, we want to, by nature, hate. So that's the way our sinful nature is as we have inherited it from Adam and Eve. And on top of that, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So in other words, my friends, by nature, we're on a different wavelength. Should someone share Jesus with an individual that doesn't have the Holy Spirit in his heart, it's total foolishness. He regards the Bible, church, someone who would dare share the Word of God as total foolishness, waste of time. So again, it underscores, doesn't it, the miracle God's work in your hearts and in mine. And why, then, it's no Jesus, no peace. My friends, have you ever stopped to think why sometimes in our lives we may not be enjoying the peace that can be ours? Isn't it our fault and not God's fault? Isn't it because we've forgotten to trust in the Lord? It's easy, isn't it? When we're hurting, we're going to focus on the hurt. When we're having problems,
problems, we're going to focus on the problems. And we forget all about what the instructions are there in Philippians chapter 4. And don't let any anxiety come to you, but with prayers and petitions, with thanksgiving, take everything to the Lord. That's something we tend to forget when we're in trouble, right? We forget to pray, perhaps. We forget to thank God for the mountain-sized blessings that never change not from the beginning of time. So we forget to stand at the foot of the cross and look up. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Trust in Him. Trust in God. So see, dear friends, we sin. We bring no peace on ourselves when we forget to put our faith into practice. And because of our sins, just think of it, we don't deserve peace here. And we don't deserve peace for an eternity. We, we deserve only separation from our holy God. He doesn't want that. That's why he sent Jesus to die on that cross. And that's why we're so blessed to know his love. And we know Jesus, we know peace, even in the midst of trouble. Because that love of our Savior, wasn't it awesome what we reviewed in Psalm 103? That love of our God never changes. It's high as the heavens. Our sins are gone from, as far as the east and from the west. What a wonderful God we have. And he's not going to forget us when we're in the midst of trouble. He's going to hold us safe in his hand. Yes, we do need Jesus come, coming to us, the word and sacrament, just like he came to his disciples on the first Easter to say, don't let your hearts be troubled. Peace be with you. The best kind of peace. Peace with God. He loves you. He's not going to let anybody separate us from his love. And my friends, along with the worship order, we shared a pamphlet called the Great Exchange. I'd like you to take that out. The passages printed in here are rather small, so they may not be visible on the screen. We've gone through this with the people who were able to be with us in Bible class that one day. So this is going to be reviewed for our people who attend the Bible class, but, but it's presented in a little different way. So hopefully it'll, be, it'll underscore the wonderful message this gives. And, and my friends, my hope and prayer is that you'll hang on to this and that when, if and when God opens a door for you to share Jesus with someone, a picture's worth a thousand words. So I hope it'll be a blessing for you as well as a blessing for others. So it's called the Great Exchange, and you'll see why in a moment. So first of all, on the first page inside there, we note we have a problem no matter who we are. Every person on earth, we have the same problem. The way we ought to be, what God requires is 100% holiness, absolutely no sin. When we have that, we have life. There's the scriptures. Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. The per be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. What a contrast, my friends, between what God wants and what he sees, whether he looks at you or me or anybody else on earth for that matter. The way we are, what God sees in us is absolutely no holiness and only total sin, which means death. There's the scriptures. There is no difference for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. And you know what human nature is like. The man likes to come up with his own solutions. He has a conscience, so he often realizes he has a problem, so he comes up with his own solutions. He may think in terms of that Peter got in there. That, you know, tip it in his favor. Do more good than bad. Or he might think in terms of a ladder. I might be at the bottom right now. I should be able to work my way up, and God should be happy. Or maybe he compares himself with other people. Look at that wicked person over there. I'm not like that. Surely that person's going to hell. I'd be going to heaven because I don't live like that. However, God says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. We want to make sure the right way is God's, what God says, not what we or people may think. And whoever keeps the whole law, all Ten Commandments, and yet stumbles in one point 
is guilty of breaking all of them. Think of it, my friend, no matter where we may think we are on that ladder, every single one of us and everybody in the world is still right there at the bottom. Praise the Lord. He has a solution. It's the right solution. It's the only solution. We call it the great exchange. Notice, you and I are pictured on the right-hand side. No holiness, only total sin to offer the Lord, require, requiring death. Way on the left, God sent a Savior. He did what God wants. Totally holy in every respect, thought, word, and deed. No sin on his record. They couldn't even lie to accuse Jesus of, of sin before uh, Caiaphas. He earned life, and, and then he, was, he took the death you and I deserve. He died on that cross for you and me so he could give to us the life he earned. So at that cross, we find forgiveness for all our sins, salvation, and life. Do you treasure the symbol of the cross like I do? If I ever see a person wearing a cross or a cross in one's home, I compliment them. That makes my day. I treasure the cross at the top of our steeple. It means so much to me. I met a, I visited with a couple this past week. No church. And she had crosses, earrings, and crosses around her neck. She said, it's a symbol of torture. I about fell over. I said, no. It's a symbol of eternal life. Jesus went to that cross to save you and to save me. What an honor was mine to explain to her the true meaning, the precious meaning of that cross. And there's the verses underscoring that. Behold, John the Baptist's words, John, uh, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And from Isaiah, The Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That passage really underscores the title for this series of, of good news and a great exchange. So, God's invitation to receive this gift. So if you're speaking to somebody who's maybe hearing about Jesus for the first time or has forgotten about Jesus, this is what we want to emphasize. So the life, this life is a free gift from God. And there's that beautiful verse, of course, that the rest of the passage, so people know the first part, forget the best part of Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift, something we never earned and could never deserve, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this gift is received personally by faith, by trusting. So it's far more different than facts in one's head. It's to be a treasure in our hearts. So here's the beautiful verse that the great by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's the gift of God. So a gift that Jesus died for us and rose again to save us. And another gift to be able to believe it. Otherwise, like we saw before, it would be foolishness to us. What a gift of God's grace to you and to me. And how does it get to our hearts? Faith comes from hearing the message through the word of Christ. So God is the one who gives it. Faith, forgiveness, and life. It comes to us, first of all, through baptism, and then it's kept in our hearts through the word of God. So see how the, there's that infinite reservoir on the left, and it comes to us a huge pipe of God's love to people's hearts if they will listen. The Holy Spirit will work that faith. So, here we have wonderful, wonderful blessings. We could talk all day about these blessings. I'll try to keep it short, but it's hard. All the blessings that are ours in Christ summarized so succinctly here. So, first one on the left, the gift that's ours through Jesus is new life. And he talks about it in the great 
um, Good Shepherd chapter, John 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This full life, dear friends, means we don't have to let our hearts be troubled, as our text is telling us. We can trust in the Lord. What a difference that makes. We can have the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's an abundant life, a full life. And of course, uh, answered prayer. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. I had that underscored Friday night. I had a flat tire. And I had to jump on that wrench to get those lug nuts off. Except for one more. It would not come. I jumped on it over and over again. I knew my wife came with a little penetrating oil, and then I remembered to pray. The Lord keep us humble. I remembered to pray. And finally, jumping on it, I got it loose. And then if you've ever changed a tire, you know the still a hard part is to get that rim off of the housing of the brake, of the brakes behind it. And the, uh, I think God sent me an angel the last time I had a flat tire. He could kick that thing and loosen it up and get it off. My kick was not as strong as his. Fortunately, my wife brought my hammer. And I remembered to pray again. And I wailed away at that tight, that rim. And finally, after a lot of rail, railing and a little more prayer, it came loose so I could change the tire and get home once again. So, did you see, dear friends, I just honored the Lord. It wasn't me. It wasn't a wonderful help for my life holding the flashlight on it so I could see what I was doing in the dark. But God answered prayer. So what a, what a blessing. How, how does anybody do it without the Lord in their life and without the gift of prayer? I do not know. Then we have Christian fellowship, what you and I get to enjoy every time we gather together in the Lord's name. And I like this verse to underscore the gift of fellowship. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day of poetry. So the meeting together of course is worship as well as Bible study and what wonderful encouragement God gives to us as we gather together in the Lord's name and sing those praises from our hymnal. God surely blesses us as we uh, encourage one another. What a gift from God in, in this life that can often be discouraging at best. So we go to our text. Jesus had just dropped a bombshell. Maybe you remember what he said to his disciples on the first Monday Thursday. He said, I'm going to be leaving you. I'm going to be going away. Where I'm going, you can't come. Can you imagine the lightning bolt that must have been to their hearts. They had such a thrill. Who wouldn't love to be in their shoes and hear Jesus' perfect sermons, see those tremendous miracles, just totally awesome to be with Jesus for those three years of his ministry. And I was going to go But he has comfort for them. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. God has wonderful promises. And like the preacher I heard whom I replaced in Lincoln, Nebraska, I've never forgotten it. Now comes the hard part, doing it. Trust in the promises of God. I never forgot it. How comes the hard part? Put into practice. Taste and see that the Lord is good, as we just sang. Blessed is he who takes refuge in him. See? So we have help when we trust in the Lord. And Jesus goes on to say, Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And uh, we, it's not wrong to say it's mansions, because it's going to be a glorious place. But literally, it's rooms. There's always going to be a spot there. There's, there's never going to be a sign, no vacancy. My father's house are many rooms. One of those rooms has your name and mine on it. If it were not so, I would have told you I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Just think of what a beautiful place that will be. We all have beautiful rooms in our own homes, right? And that's just a small taste of the wonderful place Jesus is preparing for us. So, so see, my friends, we don't even have to worry about death. That, that could be very troubling to people, but... Not for you and me, who know our God and his promises. And Jesus goes on to say, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back 
and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I heard a discussion on separation um, challenges with little children going to school for the first time or what have you. And how one wants to talk to them, prepare them, and uh, of course emphasize this very point Jesus is making. Don't worry, I'll come back to get you again. I'll be back soon. And that's what Jesus is saying here. I'll be coming back. Don't worry. And, uh, and of course Thomas didn't remember the way, so Jesus has these beautiful words for you and me. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why does it say except through me? You know, dear friends, because it takes that cross. Like Paul wrote to the Romans, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not along with him freely give us all things? So we can have peace, even if it's trouble. Because God took away the greatest burden, the greatest trouble, took away our sins. And He'll help us with every other trouble. So peace, even amidst troubles, trust in God, trust in His promises, and treasure Jesus. Jesus gives us this beautiful promise. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not give, I did, do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So, we have those blessings, huh? And the blessings include, at the end, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, Galatians 5. Wonderful blessings that you and I can't earn, you can't buy it, comes to us only by a gift of the Holy Spirit as he builds us up in faith, giving us all those wonderful gifts. Top of the list, love, joy, and peace. As well as wonderful goals. We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Isn't that interesting what the rest of that verse says? He's, which he has prepared in advance for us to do. So in other words, God chose us from eternity, and already he's, He knew when you and I would live, and he's, He prepared opportunities for us to serve Him that would bring Him glory. And of course, we have the little reminder there, good works do not produce Christians, but Christians, God's people, produce good works. My friends, a God like this, we're going to get to know God. See, if we're sharing this with somebody who's not attuned to church, not in tune with the importance of the Word of God. Here's a picture that can help, I believe. A friend of mine drew it for me. Well, first of all, so the illustration shows the world, the devil, and our own sinful nature are busy pulling with all their might, really, whether we realize it or not. Those three enemies of our God do not want anybody to stay close to Jesus. We're going to pull them away. And and of course, according to God's word, there's only one way we can stay close to Jesus till we're close to him forever in heaven. And that's the Holy Spirit's work in our hearts through the word of God. He keeps us safe in God's family, close to Jesus. My friends, do we have a heart for the lost? If you were lost and on the way to hell, wouldn't you want somebody knocking on your door, asking you, inviting you, won't you come? Come with me to church. Come with me to this event. Come with me to the Bible study. I sure would. Do we have a heart like Jesus? Isn't this amazing? Jesus is looking at Jerusalem. This is Palm Sunday. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he, he wept. He cried for these people. These are the same people who are going to do such despicable things to him. He's crying for them. And said, if you even, even you had only known this day what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. The God of this world, the devil, blinds people. And that's why it's hidden. God wants it to be evident. But people 
jive with the devil's work and ignore it. So, my friends, this is one of the most exciting things to do. Come to the Bible information class, share the Bible information class. An uh, organized way to share all the main truths in the Bible. And you see marvelous things happen. Some of you might remember Lynn Johnson. He was confirmed the first year I was here. And Lynn had never had a, he, he was in church his whole life, up, up until he left his home, that is, and wandered terribly away from the Lord. But God brought him back, and he just was thrilled. One of the people in our church, when he visited the first time, welcomed him. That made a big difference. He came back again. And he came to the Bible information class, along with his wife. And one time, he texted me this most uplifting message. He says, I love the Bible. I love Emmanuel. I love the pastor. I love the pastor's wife. He didn't have to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, Lynn moved away, so we don't have him in our midst anymore. But I'll never forget his message. And, and I'm inviting you, dear friends, remember the lost. Do you have a friend, a relative, a, an associate at work or school, a, a neighbor who does not know him? This is where he's at. No Jesus, no peace. That's what God says, who knows our hearts. And God wants, I trust, all of us want the same thing. No Jesus and no peace. And if you were able to use this and help somebody know Jesus, I would jump up and down for joy. That would be just a total joy. There's a total joy to teach God's word and see the Holy Spirit work through it. So yes, my friends, peace. Peace. Even amidst troubles when we trust in God and treasure Jesus. Then, knowing Jesus, we know peace. That's for life and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which is beyond our dream, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we join in confessing our faith in the one true God, the only God who gives true peace and eternal peace. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, if you want to follow along in your hymnal, it's on page 41. If you can see the screen, we'll have the words up there. We invite the congregation to arise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So since, as all of you know, our offerings are gathered for the Lord are gathered in the entryway. We invite you to please remain standing. We will pray the mission of the church responsive prayer. It's found on page 129 in the front of our hymnal. Page 129. Eternal God and Father, we give you thanks for the blessings we share as members of your holy church, for your gracious word and sacraments, for opportunities to worship and to grow in faith and knowledge, for occasions to serve and be served, for fellowship with believers in our congregation and in our synod. Help, Help us, us to rejoice in these blessings, dear Lord, and to use them faithfully. faithfully. Jesus Christ, Lord of the Church, you give grace to your people by calling us to be your witnesses in the world. Open our eyes to see the great and noble mission 
that lies before us, in the hurting eyes of the lonely, in the pained eyes of the sick, and in the searching eyes of the lost. Help us to see your face, O Jesus, and to serve others as we would serve you. Awaken us to the opportunities you give to proclaim your message of love. Holy Spirit, giver of life, through word and sacrament, bestow on us the wisdom and power we need to witness clearly and to act boldly. Help us to speak the truth in love, to give the reason for the hope we have, and to conduct ourselves with gentleness and respect. Set our hearts on fire as we work and witness for Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for family, family member, an acquaintance, a neighbor, or a friend who does not believe in you or whose faith is weak or troubled. Bless the church with men and women who are willing to proclaim your word in places where we cannot go. Keep them and their loved ones in your care and let nothing hinder them or their work. By the power of the gospel, restore their spirits each day so that they do not lose heart as they serve us and others. Move us to support them with our sincere prayers and generous offerings. And Heavenly Father, we pray for your continued help and blessings on Angie Walters, who continues to suffer from side effects from chemo. And we give thanks, Lord, because his brother just told us that David Rayther has been moved out of the COVID section of the nursing home and just going through therapy now. Graciously bless that therapy. And bless the friend of our congregation, Dale Grant, who hard worker, great at sports, all of a sudden dying of cancer of the pancreas and the liver. Lord, we're grateful that you have brought the ill back to Jesus through this two by four incident. If a beer will work a miracle and take that sickness away and sustain his life and his health, already you've answered this prayer for he has lived longer than what the doctors have said. So graciously bless Dale and continue to draw him ever closer to Jesus so that nothing, not even the threat of death, robs him of the peace he can have in Jesus and does have in Jesus. And Lord, be with all who are suffering and with all who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Remain by their side, assure them of your wonderful promises. Grant to all the help and strength that's needed. And Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing on the storms that are happening in our country. We pray that you would calm those storms, grant a revival, pour out your Holy Spirit, and grant the best kind of freedom that comes only through faith in Jesus, and keep us also in the land of the free, free to worship, free to serve. Wherever your word is proclaimed, O Lord, grant it success. Let your kingdom come to us and others, so that we and many more might join the assembly of saints and angels to sing your praise forever. Savior of all, hear our prayer and help us in our mission. Amen. In the name of our Savior we pray, and in his name we pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
congregation may be seated as we continue with another hymn in our blue supplement booklet, hymn 707, which is Peace Came to Earth, 707. <laughs>
this morning and review this wonderful pamphlet that displays the amazing peace we can have through faith in our Savior. Like I said, if God uses you and this pamphlet to be a bridge between a one lost soul and Jesus, it will be tremendous joy for you, for that individual. And guess what? The angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner who repents. So a party takes place in heaven and one sinner comes to know a Savior. So, and, uh, and if you find one person who wants that Bible information class, um, I will start it right here at Manual or wherever the best place might be. So just let me know. We, um, I referred to that woman with the crosses. I've been visiting that, uh, that her, her boyfriend for years. And surprise, surprise, he never accepted my invitation. God arranged it last Thursday on my way home from the circuit meeting in Lake Mills. They were home. They weren't out on their snowmobiles. They just arrived home when I arrived. God arranged it. We're going to start a Bible class for them in Fort Atkinson. So if you have any friends in Fort Atkinson that need the Savior in their life or want to review how great it is to have his peace, um, let me know. They are, they are invited. By the way, don't give up. I tried to illustrate that with talking about these friends. Don't give up. Because I read about a woman whose friend was an unbeliever. I don't know if she really kept track of it, but she said she invited this friend 44 times to special services, special events, Finally, the 45th time the friend came and the Lord touched her heart. So don't give up. Keep on praying. Keep on inviting. It makes a difference. So next week, just a heads up, will be our voters meeting. Some exciting things that we're going to be sharing with our voters. Hope you can stick, plan to stay. Um, and opportunity of next week, as you all know that, the 22nd was the horrible anniversary of Roe versus Wade. 48 years of murdering unborn children, and, and it's not against the law. So here's an opportunity to have a door offering to support the group in Watertown that is there to, to encourage the situation, adoption, not abortion. It's called Christian Life Resources, the Alpha chapter. And this Wednesday, we begin a new Bible study right here at Emmanuel, which is important chapters of the Bible. So our people who came, it's a 52-chapter uh, course. However, the people at our Bible class were pretty wise. We didn't want it to last till Jesus returns. <laughs> so they each picked 10. And a lot of them picked the last time, so that will be in the process, those chapters dealing with the last times. This coming Wednesday will be Genesis 22, Abraham's test. And... I, just a, a word of encouragement to read what's on the back page of the worship folder. There's really good news from Martin Luther College. So God bless you all with a wonderful Sunday, and uh, God be with you until we meet again. The Bible class immediately following the service, we are his witnesses as a synod is the theme. God bless. <laughs>